Uh, this is part one of a two-part series on um, a DigiWage master node creation. In part one, we're going to cover um, all the plumbing, if you will, set up for the master node. So we'll set up the first master node as, as a cold wallet. That is a secure model. If you have not watched the first video on this, uh, where I explained this diagram uh, in depth, I'll link it in the comments below or in the description. If you have not seen the video on the cold wallet setup and the architecture around it, I will post it in the description so that you can have a, uh, take a look at it before we get into the actual master node setup. It helps explain what the architecture looks like and why it's secure. So let's go ahead and get started with the master node setup for DigiWage. This is part one. We're going to show how to set up the single master node and then part two, I'll show how to set up a second master node on the same VPS. So you can have it running on just one machine. So it'll keep the cost down. Now I'm doing this on a Mac, but the I'll make comments on the Windows pieces on uh, what path to go to and all of that along the way so that you can be aware on uh, what you need to type but the rest of it is pretty self-explanatory once you get to the actual uh, wallet interface. It's going to be the same wallet. So let's go ahead. Um, if you haven't already, uh, I, I presume here at this point that you have some Vulture or DigitalOcean account on a VPS. I'm not going to show how to actually set up an account there. I'm just going to show how to start the machine or configure the machine. And I'm also going to assume that you've already downloaded the wallet and, and installed it. So if you haven't already, uh, go and download the releases tag here. Um, actually, we're going to go over to DigiWage, go to releases, and there's 1.1. So there's, there's a variety of, of versions here for Windows, OS X, Linux, so on and so forth. So go ahead and download that and launch it. So Now I've got my wallet running here and it's uh, it should automatically sync. If you haven't already, go to settings and encrypt the wallet. As you can see, I've already encrypted it, so I will have to unlock um, as we're running the variety of commands. Make sure it's completely synced. So it will sit here for a little while after it's processed, but at least it's up to date. As long as this section says up to date and it's processed that many number of blocks, you can actually go to the DigiWage block explorer here and you'll see that there are currently 15,517 blocks and I am currently at 15,517. So I am synced but it's syncing some additional data about master nodes and so on and so forth. And you can see here under my receive addresses I have one address that has all of my coins. If I were to go to send inputs and if you don't know how to do that in Mac, you can go to the DigiWage core on the left menu, go to Preferences, and under Wallet, click Enable Coin Control Features. For Windows, it would be Settings Options, typically, for, for that same screen. So in the inputs here, you can see that I have um, just one input of 36,000. So I'm going to make one master node out of this initially. So let's go ahead and create an address because this is enough collateral to set up uh, several master nodes, but we want to set up the one initially. So we're going to go ahead and send just enough collateral to set up the first master node. If, again, if I go to send inputs, you can see I only have the one that does not recognize as enough collateral or the right amount of collateral. So I'm going to go ahead and send, but first thing I need to do is create my master node address. And remember, I'm doing this locally here because in, at the end of the day, once this is all set up, we're going to have a VPS with the gen key, um, a, a few other pieces of information, but the actual collateral is going to reside in my cold wallet, which is the, that secure setup. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new one, and I'm going to call it MN01. Now, I know a lot of people just do MN1, that's fine too, it's a matter of preference. I like to give myself a little bit more uh, uh, characters there. Address, we're not going to put any address here, we just need to create a new label for it. And when we hit OK, we're going to have a new master node address. So I'm going to copy that, close that, and I'm going to send 
exactly 12,000 coins to this master node 01 address. I'm going to hit send. I'm going to enter my passphrase. You're going to accept the fee. And if you look at transactions, you can see that it's currently unconfirmed. So if I go to send again and go to inputs, you can see now I have 12,000 coins in a label of masternode 01, MN01, and here's my address. Now my original address doesn't show up here as having the, the change because there's, uh, you know, whenever you send coins out, the, the change comes back in a different address and that's actually uh, by design by uh, Satoshi Nakamoto in the original spec for Bitcoin on using change addresses. I will have a video on how to do change addresses at some point, but um, or what change addresses are and, and how to deal with them. But that's okay. We, we don't mind as long as it, the change address is actually in my wallet. It just generated it for the purposes of having that change. And so it's no big deal. I still have the coins there. You can see I still have the, the amount of coins I need. So now if I look at my transactions, you can see I have two of six confirmed and I've got my 12,000 coins. Now this is not fully conformed master node until it gets to 15 confirmations, but that is okay. We don't need to worry about that right now. So if I go to tools and debug, the first thing I need to do to set up my master node is I need to generate a master node gen key. So I need to, I'm gonna run master node gen key and keep this copy. Now I'm gonna make this public because it's on the video, I'm gonna change it later, but this is a key, you know, that it doesn't, it's not the end of the world if this gets exposed because you can always come in, generate a new gen key, update your configurations and restart your master node and you're fine, right? But I'm gonna go ahead and keep a copy of this somewhere on the side here. So I've got, I've got a little, my little notepad, right? And I'm gonna call it MN01 gen key. The other piece of information that I need to save is my master node outputs. Now remember, I just sent 15 or 12,000 coins to my master node. Now I've got my transaction hash, so I'm gonna have to save that, and my output index is zero. So my TX hash is that, and my index is zero. So I'm gonna save all these pieces of information because I'm gonna need them in a few minutes. Now look at this, I showed this already in Block Explorer, but if I go over to my receive addresses and copy my MN01 address and paste it in here into Block Explorer, you can see that I have a hash with 12,000 coins that I just sent. Now look at this, 196, 196 and ends in EAE, -A -E. That's also what I got from my master node outputs. 196 ends in EAE. The index of zero means that this is zero, this is one. This is the change that came back to me. It didn't come back to my original address because that's how change addresses work, unless you put a custom change address, which is outside of the scope of this video. But you can see I have 12,000 coins in this index zero, and that's what the index is for that particular transaction. So I've got that all saved and ready to go. Now comes the VPS part. So let's go ahead and get the VPS piece configured. So under deploy servers for my uh, Vulture, I'm just gonna choose a location. I'm gonna go to Ubuntu and choose the latest version of Ubuntu. The $5 a month uh, one is sufficient for running um, you know, multiple master nodes. So I'm just gonna choose that one for now. I'm gonna enable IPv6 and this becomes more important when you want to set up multiple master nodes of the same coin because the first one is going to be IPv4, which is the normal address that you see, the 1.2.3.4 type addresses. And the IPv6 has a special format, which we'll deal with in the second video because we're going to use this to bind for our second wallet of our instance on the same machine so it can run our second master node. But the, for now, we're just going to enable it so that it's, it's available. I'm not going to worry about firewall right now, but I'm going to call this master nodes and you can label the server whatever you like. I'm going to go ahead and hit deploy and wait for it to start. 
All right, so now our master node VPS machine is online and ready for us to log in. I'm going to be on a Mac, so you'll see me using iTerm or Terminal a lot to SSH into these boxes, but I also have a Windows machine up here so I can show you what the PuTTY session would look like. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this address, and I'm going to SSH as root to that IP address. And it's going to ask me for a fingerprint, and I accept yes, because that's the unique fingerprint of the SSH session. They do this because if your machine ever changes, it'll let you know and that will give you some indication that something's wrong and you should be uh, worried. So there you go. I, I, I'm on the machine here. I'm on my master note machine in the VPS cloud. I'm going to go and log in to the same machine using PuTTY just so you can see what that looks like. So um, if you haven't grabbed PuTTY yet, I will put a link to it from this download page. Um, I'll put it in the in the description. So I'm going to put the host machine address in. So let's go ahead and copy this and paste in here. Okay. And you can save the session um, if you like, but or we're just going to hit open. And you're going to get the same fingerprint just like I did on my Mac. So I'm going to hit yes and I'm going to type root. And then I'm going to copy my password. And with PuTTY, you don't actually control C like and you do in Windows or, or control V to paste you actually just right click and we can't see anything that I just actually right click there but there you go I'm, I'm in the machine all right so you can use that to log into um, your session but I'm going to use my terminal session from here on out just so I can show you quickly how to how to get there and, and move around so first thing we're going to do is run a command and let's make this a, a bigger so you can see it. And we're going to run this command. And I'm going to put all of this transcript into the description as well so you can follow along without having to um, read the screen and try to type along. So I'm going to user add. I'm going to create the shell for it. But I'm going to create the MN01 user because remember, I'm going to have a second user in the second video that's going to have a second instance of the same wallet. And I'll show you how to how to manage that. So that's why we call this DigiWage MN01, which is kind of my standard. And when you hit enter, nothing's going to happen because it already created the user. So now we're going to type PASSWD and then that user because I have to give it a password. So go ahead and give it some password. That can be anything you like, and we're not going to use it often. So, but just remember that password. Now we're going to make swap and swap is basically if you run top here you can see i have no swap if this machine ever runs out of memory things will start crashing um, and the kernel will start killing off processes to free up memory because this only has a physical one one um, gig of memory you can get the higher end box for ten dollars if you're worried about memory and you want to have more master nodes on there that's up to you for the purpose of the video i just did the one gig you can see i have no swap so i'm going to create that now okay, i'm going to clear this and I'm just going to paste uh, the commands that I have in my uh, in my description. That command that's going to create a small, um, you know, one gig file. I'm going to make it that file to be a swap file. I'm going to set the permissions on it properly, and I'm going to turn on the swap. So that it actually turns swap on. Now, if I hit top, you can see now I have a one gig swap partition, which is going to help me. I'm going to quit out of there. So it's going to help me in case something goes wrong. My machine starts using up too many resources. It'll start swapping to disk. It'll get slower, but at least things will get killed. Now I'm going to run this echo command. Um, that's going to put into the Etsy FS tab, so that if I were to reboot this machine, that swap would not be enabled. This ensures that swap gets enabled when your machine gets rebooted. Now I'm still root, so I'm going to do a few things like app get update, and because this machine comes from an image, and that image may be weeks old, months old, who knows how long, and so when the VPS provider builds your machine, they typically don't have uh, all the latest updates, especially the security updates. So I'm, I did app get update, and I'm going to type app get upgrade, and get that guy completely upgraded. You can see there's a bunch of packages here that need to be upgraded. Now I'm completely upgraded, and before I actually reboot, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the package 
using this command. This is just w getting this uh, tar. The, these are called tar balls, tar.gz of the 1.1 release of the wallet. And so you can see it's grabbing that file now. And I'm going to run tar on that file to untar it. And it's going to create a bunch of paths. So we're going to cd. See if I if I do an ls here, you can see I have a directory here. So I'm going to cd into that directory. And I'm going to go into the bin. And there's a bunch of packages here. Right? We don't need to worry about the test ones. We don't need to worry about the Qt. This is just one big package for Linux. We really only need to have worry about one, two, and three. So we're going to move these. The, the digiwage CLI, the digiwage, and the transaction, and we're going to move this to user bin. Now, if I do an ls on user bin, you can see, or rather, let's do an ls tlr, which will give us by time. Maybe not. We'll just type digi star. That'll be easier. So there you go. You got all the packages that are essentially digiwage. Okay. So let's go ahead and reboot this box, and we're going to log back in as the new account because you you know I'm still root, right? We did all that for the plumbing, but now we actually need to be able to run the wallet, and we want to run that wallet as the digi wage mn01 user because we will eventually run a second instance as a 02 user. So you don't want to run this as root. I typically don't want to run any uh, binaries in Linux as root, so you want to run as a normal user. Now I can type reboot here, and I'll get kicked out. But for purposes of the Windows users, let me just show you by typing reboot in my PuTTY session. When I do that, I'm going to get a loss of connection. That's okay. I'm going to have to close this out, relaunch it, and I'm going to go ahead. And these machines come up pretty quickly, so I'm going to copy the address again. And I'm going to paste it in here and just wait a minute for that machine to come back up. So let's go ahead and hit open. And this time it's going to say login as what? Well, this time I'm going to log in as did digiwage MN user. So again, I'm going to go back to my terminal. I just want to show you what it looks like in PuTTY. But I'm going to go ahead and hit my up arrow, same IP. But this time I'm going to log in as the digiwage MN01 user. And when I ask for a password, I'm going to type in the password, not from Vulture because that's the root password, my password that I originally created when I created that user. Okay, so now if I look at my packages here, you can see that in my in my home directory, right? I have no I have no DigiWage folder or directory for data. That's when the wallet runs, it has a data directory, just like on Windows, it has the app roaming, which we'll show in a little bit. It also has a location for um, for that on Linux. So I'm gonna go ahead and run digiwage and the reason I can auto-complete this, if I type digi and tab a couple times, you can see it's showing me different commands. I type digi, it shows me my three commands. The reason is these binaries are in the user bin directory which is globally available to every user, okay? So I'm gonna run the digiwage d which is the daemon. And when I run that, it's gonna spit out and say, hey, I in this particular home directory, in this data directory, the comp file does not have any username and password. So it wants you to, it generates one for you. Now I recommend taking this uh, and not revealing it. Of course, in my case, I have the YouTube video. I'll, I'll go and change this later to some other um, information. But uh, regardless, my RPC server is not gonna be listening on, on, uh, on the internet anyway. So that's fine. I'm gonna go and copy this. So just in PuTTY, you actually would highlight this and then just left click and that copies it. Remember how right click paste things that you've already copied? Well, if you highlight in PuTTY and then you left click, that puts it into your buffer and you can paste it later. So now look, I have a digiwage folder. So I'm gonna go into the dot digiwage directory and I've got a digiwage.conf. So you could type in nano digiwage.conf And I'm going to paste this in here. In your case, you just right click. Now I've got the username and password in here, but I'm gonna add a few more pieces of information, which is RPC allow IP. This is the loopback. This is why I told you that it's not listing on all ports. Do not put 0000 here. 
you always want to have it listening only to its own wallet. RPC port, I'm going to put 46100. Now say, well, isn't isn't uh, DigiWage on 46003? Yes, that is the port that the wallet will listen on. This is for RPC server. I can keep, I can bind this to any port I want. I keep it something completely away from 46003. I call it 46100 because my second instance for my second master node is going to be 46101. And if you have a third, you can do 102, etc. And you, it won't hurt the server when you're binding to these various ports. I'm going to put server equals one because it's going to actually have an RPC server built in. Daemon equals one, so it's not running in the foreground. When you run it, it will just automatically run as a service. So you can log out and go about your day and the service will keep running. Listen equals one will bind to port 46003. So I'm going to type port 46003. And this is optional. You don't have to type this because that's the default. Max connections. I, on my master node, I like to do 300. I'm going to put bind equals. And this is where this piece comes into play. You should put your IP here. And people typically don't do that because they don't put these two pieces of information, which is external IP and bind IP. And if you don't, the port, the wallet is going to bind to the 0.0.0.0 address on your box. And that basically listens on all IPs. And so that prevents you from running a second master node for the same coin because that port is now you um, utilized for every IP address. So by doing this, you tell it, hey, I've got one machine that has multiple IP addresses. Remember we enabled IPv6? Well, this is my IPv4 address, which has my first master node, and the second video will bind to a second address on the same machine so that there is no conflict of ports. I'm gonna put master node equals one, and I'm gonna put master node Rev key equals, and I'm going to copy the gen key that I created here, right? Remember that thing we keep keeping our notepad here handy? So let's go ahead and paste that in there. And I'm going to save that. So I've got all of my configurations, and for Nano, I'm going to hit Control O. That's going to write the file out. I'm going to hit Enter. That's the file I want to write to. And then I'm going to hit Control X for exit. So if I cat out my digiwage.com file, I should have all the pieces of information I need. All right? If I do ifconfig, you can see here, there's my IP address. The 26.11. I've also got an IPv6, which we'll deal with later for the second master node. It's not relevant right now. Now remember the wallet, the first time I ran, it basically spit out an error saying, hey, you don't have a configuration that's acceptable, and it gave us it, uh, a temporary password to use, right? And you, again, you could change this if you like, or just use it, it's fine. Nobody else should know that anyways. So now I'm going to run DigiWage again. DigiWage D, which is the daemon. And when you run that, it's going to say, hey, I've got some error here, so let's see what it's complaining about. Uh, I have a typo here, equal. I'm going to save that, okay? Now I've got the right configuration. There you go. Now I'm going to run DigiWageD again. And there you go, server started. You can see I can type now because it's running as a service. And if I go in here, there's a debug log. So if I tail that debug log, you can see I'm syncing right now. So I'm going to do tail-f, let's do it a little bit slower in case folks need it, tail-f, as long as you're in this directory, tail-f on debug log and let it sync up. So there we go, we're, we're so far on height 5000, we know that Block Explorer says that our height is currently 15,000 something. So it's got a little bit of catching up to do. So while we do that, let's go back to our UI. While this thing is syncing up, let's go back to our UI for now. Our UI wallet. Now we've got 
our wallet all uh, ready with the collateral, but we need to edit a configuration file, and that is the masternode.conf file. So I'm going to quit out of the wallet for now because I'm going to have to restart it. I'm going to go into my library application, and you can actually, whenever you get into Finder on a Mac, you just hit Command Shift G and then type in this tilde slash library slash application support for Windows. Uh, for you Windows users, you will actually have to go into for you Windows users, you will have to go into Explorer, come up here and type percent app data percent, and when you hit enter, there will be a DigiWage directory here. I don't have it running on my Windows machine uh, right now, but uh, you'd essentially go into the same directory I'm going into now. And in there is a masternode.com file. So I'm going to right click on this, and in your case you're going to open it with Notepad. I have a TextPad editor here. Now it gives you a format to type it in. Here, example, this is your alias, this is the IP and port, this is the gen key, this is the transaction hash and the index. So let's go ahead and type on a new line. I'm going to call mine MN01, same label I like to give it before. The IP is going to be of my VPS, so I'm going to copy that paste it in here, colon 56003 is the remote address. My gen key, you remember we already configured our, our daemon with the same gen key, so now we're going to paste our gen key in here, space, we're going to take our transaction hash, paste, space, and zero is our index. So you should have a format that looks like this, some alias, IP of your VPS, with the port, a gen key, a transaction hash, and a index. So I'm going to save that and close out of here. Now let's relaunch the wallet. Now before we do that actually I want to show you, see this, it, it synced up all the master nodes and look what this message it says here. This is a really important message. It says not capable hot node waiting for remote activation. See that's exactly what it's doing. It realizes that this has no balance, right? If I type the CLI command to get balance, I have no balance. There's no collateral in here. This is a completely dummy wallet. If somebody were to hijack this thing, that's why I'm not going to encrypt it or password protect or anything. Because if somebody hijacks that, good luck, you know, enjoy my zero coins. So if I go into the UI, so I'm going to go and launch my wallet now. And because I'm, I edited my masternode.com file, it now will read the actual configuration. So let's go into debug console and I'm going to type in here masternode list conf and there it goes. There's my alias, there's the IP with the port, this is gen key, private key, there's a transaction hash, there's an output index of zero and the status says missing. That's fine. Now one of the things that before you start your masternode, one of the things you want to do is go into transactions and even though this has a check mark here, that's just that just means that I got at least 10 confirmations. But this 12,000 coins that I sent back to myself, you need to have at least 15 confirmations before you can start the master node. I've got 51, so I'm good to go. So I'm going to go to tools. First thing I'm going to do is unlock my wallet because I'm going to have to run a command that's going to require the wallet to be unlocked. I'm going to go to tools and debug console. You can see I've already, I did a list conf, which means my master node.com file was read properly and parsed. So this is good news here that it's showing that. And I'm going to type in start master node alias false mn01. Now what this says is start this master node of alias, don't lock the wallet again, false. And here's the alias that I need to start. So when I do that and I tail my debug log, now look at this message I just got. Got new master node entry. That's my hash. Okay, this just broadcasted it to the network and the network accepted my registration. Remember we talked about in the architecture, it's I've now registered it. And then you'll get this message, which is the success message. Enable hot cold wallet master, right? Enabled, you may shut down your cold daemon. At this point, I can shut this wallet down and my master node will now be available on the uh, monitoring site. So let's go ahead and check on that. So we're going to go over here to receive addresses. 
pull up my MN. And um, there's a site called digiwage.mn.zone. And if you go to that, you can see that it's currently not showing, but at some point within the next hour, it will show up here with your node IP port, etc. And then just monitor it and just make sure that it continues to show over the next hour. But given that we got this message, we believe that we will have um, no issues, particularly with this master node. So again, now the UI has a collateral. See that? Now that it actually read that and has registered the master node, it locks that collateral because it knows that it is a capable master node with the collateral and I've got MN01, I can continue to create more, which I'll show in the second video on how to create the second one. I can now shut down my UI wallet and my master node will continue running without any issues and continue getting a reward. Now those rewards are gonna get paid to the address that's currently controlled by that uh, my wallet on my desktop here, my MacBook, or in your case, your Windows machine. So this VPS is nothing more than a peer on the network providing services, and the payments will continue to be paid in the blockchain to that MN address, and guess what? Your UI wallet that's local here has that private key. This does not control those funds. Your wallet that's on your local machine controls it. So once you've registered it, just go over to digiwage.mn.zone, and just check it after 20 or 30 minutes, make sure it shows up there. And let's see here, just make sure that it shows up there and you shouldn't have any issues. We can take another peek at it real quick. So let's grab the hash. Sometimes if you don't have the address, you can just quickly look at the hash. Look up the hash and you can see here's my, my master node address. So I'll just copy that and paste it in here. So still, still nothing yet, but let's go back and see maybe it just needs a refresh. Okay, there we go. So there you go, all right? My IP address, my port, there's my payee address. It was active just a few seconds ago, and then you'll see when it was last paid and so on and so forth. That's it for now. I will have a second video on how to create the second master node on this exact same server without having any conflicts. If you have any questions, feel free to leave some comments below. I will post a transcript of what was done and some links to other videos and links to the PuTTY download if you need it.